Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. So now that we understand how to register a custom endpoint, and this is a GET request, you could very well do a POST request also. Let's look at the WordPress code as to what WordPress code is doing with these functions. So starting from the register rest route, which is the main function that actually registers the route. Let's go deep into it. So if you go to this function in the code, you have you can see there is a file called restapi.php, which is inside of the WP includes. So this is the file that's responsible for all the handling all the REST API functions. And um, you can see that a current version of the REST API is 2.0. And this is the function basically which registers the route. It also says that do not use before REST API init hook. So notice that we are hooking it on the REST API init hook. It wants, it's telling us, make sure that you're, you're registering all your routes, which is here on that hook nothing before so don't register any hook that gets fired before the rest api in it so this is the best hook to hook in your custom function that registers that registers your rest api endpoint so make sure you do that okay and uh, then it takes different parameters such as namespace you have the route you have arguments you have overrides all of those things right and here is checking the namespace if the namespace is not present it's just saying that route must be having the namespace with the plugin or theme uh, it's checking if the route is present and then it's just cleaning the namespace trimming all the ca extra characters and then it must not start or end with a slash so namespace should not start or end with a slash so notice that we don't have a slash here we don't have a slash here so it should not start or end so those are the checks that are that is happening here and it's making sure that it's getting hooked to uh, rest api init hook if not then it's just saying that it must be registered on, on that hook uh, is checking all the arguments over here uh, callback for is checking if the callback is set or not the default method is get which means if i wouldn't even have passed this methods by default it would have understood that it's actually a get method okay and uh, arguments uh, by default is nothing then it's looping through all those arguments merging them and then finally also checking the permission callback if the permission callback is set or not again it's looping through the different arguments here checking if the argument is an array creating the full route and then calling the register route function of the rest get server which is inside of the wp rest server class and then this is the place which actually taking all of the data and registering your route right whatever namespace you passed whatever route you passed speaking up all of that and this is where it is actually registering your route all right so you can go deeper i'm not uh, going too deep into it but uh, as i've just shown you how wordpress is handling the rest api like what happens when you call the register rest route function okay how what happens under the hood so the best place for you to go in case if you get stuck anytime and you're not really getting information uh, on the on the web is to check the WordPress core. Check the definition, where it's defined, what is it expecting? If something is not working, why it's not working? You should be able to find the, your, your answers there. And, and WordPress core is extensively documented. That's the best part. Take a look at the kind of documentation is present. It's like a whole chunk there, right? And that's pretty useful. Excellent. So now we're gonna just show you the search. So let's say if I say Q equals hello, I will get all the posts. So I have seven posts available that says hello. Right, you can see the title we have hello in the content we have hello. Right now, what are the other parameters available? Then we have the categories, so it needs categories IDs. So, if I say categories, so if I look at the categories, uh, this categories ID adventure place is 42. If I go back, there are around four posts associated with it. So, I should get four posts if I did that. So I'm going to say categories equals 42 and I hit enter. There you go, you have four posts. You can total posts, four, post per page is nine, number of pages, one. Okay, what if I combine two categories? So this one and then this one. So there'll be three plus four. So that'll be your seven. Okay, so what's the idea of this one? Well, the idea of this one is 43. So I'm going to paste that. Comma separate, you can put comma separate IDs. You can put as many as you want, like you can do like that, like that, and so on. Just go with two for now. Hit that. 
And now you can see that I've got seven posts, four plus three, seven, right? Because it's giving me all the posts that belongs to both the categories, right? Similarly, you can pass tags also. So, you know, you can pass this tags, you can just do and tag, and then whatever the ID is, you can do that, right? And then you can pass the page number, you can pass change the post per page, all of that, right? Brilliant. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Please do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Coditech. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad. And do give me the super thanks to support my work. And thank you very much. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.